Let's uh, discuss some question with our partner to just to just review the last class. So I'll discuss with your partner what is the balance of payments. Sovereign Wealth Fund and what do they do? Discuss with your partner. What is a Sovereign Wealth Fund and what do they do? Some people they don't discuss with their partner, they're just looking at their notes. Maybe your partner knows the answer. How about asking them before looking at your notes? Ask your partner what is the sovereign wealth fund? Sovereign wealth fund. What does it do? Okay, so, Ugyun Hao, 
what is a government? A sovereign wealth fund. What is a sovereign wealth fund? Who controls the fund? Uh, the government. Okay. So what do they do? Uh, to keep the balance of the financial uh, and uh, so what kind of things do they buy? Where do they invest? Where do they typically invest? What kind of things do they buy? Do they buy bananas? <laughs> or in a store? Where do they invest the money that they get from exports and oil? Foreign, what kind of country? Uh, the developed country. Like which one? Like. Right, like they they can invest a lot in government bonds from the US, okay, or in government bonds in other countries, Germany. Okay? So they recycle the foreign exchange reserve. We saw that if the country is managing their their currency, it helps them to keep their currency weaker, it helps them to buy dollars, sell their currency, right? So, we saw the trends in the balance of payments, and what we can see, does the US have a current account surplus or deficit? Deficit. Does Japan have a current account surplus or deficit? Surplus. Surplus. Does Korea have a current account surplus or deficit? It's not here, but you should know. Does Korea export more or import more? Export more. So current account surplus or deficit? Surplus. What about Germany? Surplus or deficit? Surplus. The UK? Deficit. Deficit. Okay, so we can get used. There's a trend in the current account. Some countries have constantly a deficit. Some countries have constantly a surplus. Okay. So then let's talk about the national income accounting briefly. So national income or gross domestic product is equals to the sum of the nominal consumption of goods and services, private investments, government spending and the difference between exports and imports. So we can also write for GDP, consumption of goods and services, private investment plus government spending plus exports minus imports. So here is some uh, terms that we can see in the balance of payments. Trade balance, it represents the difference between the exports and imports of goods and services. In the current account we had some other small things like uh, gifts to foreigners, right, or people who wire money to a different country, send money to another country, to their family. But trade balance is just goods and services. Okay. Also merchant merchandise, trade balance is just goods. Merchandise. Servant merchandise is like goods. Do you understand goods? Yes. Do you understand the difference between goods and services? Yes. We discussed before. Services bal balance, right? It's just services. Transportation, travel, expenditure, legal assistance. Do you think in the US their goods or services is bigger? Some economies are different, right? Some economies have more goods, some economies have more service sector industry. The income balance is the net investment income. Is the difference between income on US owned assets abroad and income payments on foreign owned assets in the United States? So it includes interest and dividend payments and earnings of domestically owned firms operating abroad. So the payment of this interest payments is included in the current account income balance. So the interest payments on 
the U.S. people get on the bonds they own from the foreign countries or the interest payments the U.S. has to pay to the other countries. If you get a loan, you have to pay interest. Okay? So the principal is in the principal is in the capital account because that's long term, but the interest is more short term, so we put in the current account. Okay? So this could be a problem for the U.S. in the future. If the interest rate goes up, then it has to pay more money in interest in its current account. <laughs> Net unilateral transfers. This is the difference between gifts received from the rest of the world and gifts made by the US to foreign countries. So, uh, let's say somebody from a poor country in South America is working in the US. They, they will send money back to their family. That will be recorded here. Okay, that's like a gift. They sent the money to their family as a gift. Or people can send money to the US. But I guess that more people send money out of the US than to the US. So, in the financial and capital account, this is the difference between the sale of assets to foreigners and purchases of assets held abroad. So we can see US assets is the US reserve assets, US government assets, US private assets. So uh, the US government could buy land in Korea for the military, right? That's going to be included here. Okay? The US companies can buy a company in Korea, that's included here. Okay? The US person could buy stocks in Korea, that's included here. The US government buys euros or gold. That's also included here. So let's have a look at this website. This is the official website of the US government statistics about uh, the econo economy. Bureau of Economic Analysis. So just we look at the real life balance of payments. So where should I go here? National, international, regional, industry, or supplementary? International. International. What's the first one in international? Service. Then we have trades and goods and services. Then we have services, international investment, and so on. Right? So balance of payments. So <coughs> we have some different uh, under here. Okay, but. Uh, We want to go here, balance of payments accounts, international transactions accounts. Okay. So we click here, and we can see balance of payments, new release, international transactions. So we can also use international transactions. You said that international transactions is easier than balance of payments. It makes more sense, right? So here we can see international transactions. So this is the US international transactions. Uh, first quarter, 2015. It takes a while to put the data together. Okay, when was the first quarter in 2015? What months are we talking about? January to March, right? So here we have the, a summary. You can read this. It explains about what's happening in the current account, goods and services and so on. Capital account, financial account. Okay, it, it gives an explanation, so you could read this in your own time. But we're going to look at the ta some tables. Okay, so we can see that it's, there's, it, this is a whole report on the U.S. international transactions. Okay, in PDF, in PDF form. So if we scroll down, we'll get the table. And we can get an idea here, it's a little bit detailed, so we can get an idea of what kind of things make up the balance of payments, right? So we can see table one, US, they call international transactions, same as balance of payments, okay? What's first? Current account. Exports. Exports of goods and services. So goods in the US is 1.5 trillion, okay? These numbers are in millions of dollars. Okay, so that's a one million million. So services, 
687, right? So goods is actually, exports for the US, goods is actually larger than services, right? We can see here. What kind of goods do they export most? Capital goods. Okay, we can see here foods, industrial supply, capital goods, except automotive. Okay, so the US exports a lot of industrial supplies. Do you understand industrial supplies? What are industrial supplies and materials? The, um, the <laughs> Things that companies use, right? An industrial supply could be some equipment for the company to use, right? Like printers or that kind of thing. Or it could be some cleaning liquid, anything like that for a machine, cleaning liquid for a machine. Okay. Then we have automotive vehicles, consumer goods, other merchandise. Right? Under services, transport, travel, financial services, telecommunications. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we have this, we said this is the income receipts, the interest pay payment. Okay? Then we have imports. Uh, so we can see the imports is higher. Of goods and services, it's 2.7. Goods and services exports, 2.2. Uh, <coughs> so the imports is higher, and then we get we see that we have the uh, balance is going to be a deficit. So uh, this is 2013, 2014. This is the first quarter, 2015 here and they give the changes on the left, on the right. Then we go down to the capital account. So we're just looking, what can we see here in the capital account? Maybe it's clearer, we can see under the heading, right? So we have portfolio of direct investment, right? In equity and debt. Portfolio investment, investment funds, debt securities, okay? Other investments, loans, trade credit, reserve assets, gold, so on. Then the US incurring the liability uh, is going to be higher. This is the US investing abroad. And then this is people investing in the US. So here it's 1.1 trillion and here it's 643 billion. So there's more people investing in the US in things like equi equity <coughs> and debt. So we can see here debt securities is almost half. Okay, so they're buying debt in, in the US. Could be the company's debt or the government's debt. Okay, so how do you buy debt? Buy bonds, right? Bond is debt. You understand debt? Yes. Okay, equity is talking about stocks. So we have equity and debt. So a lot of people are buying long term, long term debt in the US. Half of this number, 524 of the 1 billion, is long term debt in the US. Okay, so we can see that these sovereign wealth funds are investing a lot in the government bond or com company bond. So the long term then mean ten years? Uh, yeah, long term is going to be five or ten years or twenty years. Sometimes they buy thirty years. Too. So you can have a look at this information and this report yourself, right? If you go to the website, you can find. It explains about each thing, right? So we're not going to do now, but you know, it explains the goods exports decreased, right? The largest decreases was in industrial supplies. So then let's move on to the current account. Talk about the current account in more detail. So we're going to talk about the links between the domestic, the home country, and the international way. So, first of all, we look at some equations, that things we can put together. So we have domestic savings and investment and the capital account. So, national income is either spent or saved. So you get money, you have two choices, right? You can save your money or spend your money. Spend, we put C, like consuming. Do you understand consume? Yes. To be jobs? <laughs> what time do you say spend? 
or so, sorry, saving. <laughs> so the, this, we get our income, and it's equals to we either consume or spend the money. Then the spending we can divide further. Spending can be divided into personal spending, consumption, and investment. A little bit confusing because we saw here C. Here we have C plus I. Okay, so the spending is divided up into I buy stocks. I mean, what am I doing? Consuming or investing? Invest. Investing. Okay, I buy a car. What am I doing? Consuming or investing? Consuming. Right. So we can do this. We have Ni equals C plus S, Ns equals C plus I. Ni minus Ns equals S minus I. So if Basically, S is greater than I, okay, then the surplus capital must be spent overseas. So, if we look back here, we can see saving. S is saving in this one, right? And I is, I is investment. So, if savings is greater than investment, then the surplus capital will be spent overseas. Does that make sense? Which countries do you think save more money than they invest? China. China. Chinese people save money, right? They don't invest the money in China, in the Chinese economy much. Okay? Japanese people the same. They save money and they don't invest much in the Japanese economy, right? So where is the money going to go that they saved? They saved this money, it's not being invested in their country. Where is the money going to go? Yes, into another country, right? Abroad. It's going to be invested abroad. So, if our national income is greater than our national uh, spending, savings is greater than investment, and we have surplus money, capital money, which is going to be spent overseas. So in a free-floating system, the excess saving is equal to the capital account balance. So the implication is a nation which produces more than it spends will save more than it invests domestically with a net capital outflow producing a capital account deficit. So Japan has a capital account deficit. Okay. It produces more than it spends. Okay. Germany is the same. It saves more than it invests domestically and invests money abroad, giving a deficit on the capital account. <coughs> on the other hand, a nation which spends more than it produces, so what, what countries people like to spend money? Buying things. If yes. you look in their garage, they have a lot of things that they don't need. Yes. The US, right? If you go to the US, they have big house, right? Uh, they have a lot of space there. They have wooden houses. Do you know the garage? Yes. They have a lot of things in there. They, they bought them. They don't, don't need them. <laughs> or they just wanted it for just a few weeks. Now they don't want it anymore. Put there. A lot of things. Right? Do you do that in Korea? Do you have space to put all the things that you buy? Big apartment have garage. Yes. Can you have a garage? No. No. Right. So uh, it's the same for me now in Korea. In Ireland, I didn't throw things away. I just put them in the garage. The garage is a big mess of useless things and old <laughs> things. But in Korea, my wife makes me throw away things that I don't use because <laughs> don't have as much space. Right. So I have to learn. I don't want to throw it away, even though it's not valuable. Right? So in the US, they spend a lot of money. They, buy, they like big things in the US. You look at the cars, they like pickup trucks. Who has been to the US before here? Has anybody been to the US? Yes? Did you see a lot of big cars in the US? Yes. <coughs> okay. So they like spending money. Where do they get the money to spend? 
Where does the U.S. get the money to spend? They have capital account surplus, right? Other people invest in their country. So a healthy economy will tend to run a current account deficit, just generally. Okay? It, in that we can look at the current account deficit in a couple of ways, but one way, positive way we can look at it is like the US. Okay? You have a strong economy. People want to invest in your economy. Okay? So you, you can get a lot of investment, and then you can have a current account deficit. Okay? So, <clears throat> then we can link the current and capital accounts. So we can start with this equation. National income minus national spending equals uh, exports minus imports. Exports minus imports is the current account balance. Then we can combine this part was up here, this one was equals to S minus I. So we can make S minus I is equals to exports minus imports. Okay, and savings minus investment we said is is the money we invest abroad, the net foreign investment. So net foreign investment is equals to exports minus imports. So the cap current account is equals to the capital account. So if the capital current account is in surplus, the nation, nation must be a net exporter of capital. So we have a current account surplus, we are exporting money. Okay? If the current account is in a deficit, the nation is importing money, taking money in. Okay? So when the spending is higher than the income, the excess will be acquired through trade. So we're going to look at some solutions for improving current account deficit. So we can see that the US has a long-term current account deficit. Okay, but if they want to change that, some people complain that all the manufacturing jobs left the US. <coughs> Do you understand manufacturing jobs? Yeah. Like Donald Trump, right? He says all the manufacturing jobs leave the US. Do you know what Donald Trump's solution is to solve that problem? Solved the current account deficit in the U.S. To pay to tax. China put a tariff on China, Chinese goods. Do you understand tariff? Yes. Do you think that's a good idea for the U.S. to stop their current account deficit? Put a tariff on Chinese China and Chinese goods? No. Why not? Uh, it's no. You trade if if to make a trade war and they. Concept trade barrier, so global trade is raised down. Okay. Can you call Donald Trump and tell him that? <laughs> Do you have his phone number? Oh, no. no. His advisor should be telling him that, right? Uh, so that's one solution, but not a very good one, right? So we can raise our national income output relative to domestic investment. We can increase our savings relative to investment. So US people could save more money, okay? Rather than spending, they could save more money. Okay, that's one way. By looking at these equations, we can see that savings minus investment equals exports minus imports. So if we decrease this, increase savings, okay? then this side will balance out, and this side should balance out. Okay. Currently, this is negative for the US. So do you have any questions so far? Just We went through some equations, but the main thing we're showing is the relationship between savings and investment in our economy, and exports and imports. Okay. So we're saying savings and investments is equals to exports minus imports. So then we can make a solution for solving this current account deficit. If this is a big minus number, then we need to increase this one, right? Savings, okay, on the other side. Or we can raise our income. So we also looked here at this equation. 
income minus spending equals here. So we could also raise this one, national income or uh, GDP output. So we can also think we also can think about the government spending. So uh, we, ha we the U.S. also has these days government budget deficit. Do you understand? We explained before fiscal deficit. What is the fiscal deficit? What does it mean? Government budget deficit. The government more than the yes. Okay. The government is spending more than it gets from its taxes. So uh, we also have uh, this affecting our current account balance. Okay. So if the government saves more money, just like here, people saving more money. If the government saves more money, then also we can improve the current account uh, deficits. So the current account deficit means the country is not saving enough uh, to finance income and the deficit. The current account surplus means the nation is saving more than is needed to finance its income and government deficit. So here are some solutions which will not work. What probably will not work, right? Currency depreciation and protectionism. So we, which is Donald Trump suggesting? Protection. Protectionism. Okay, tariffs is the most obvious way of doing protectionism. There are many different ways of doing protectionism. We'll look at some other ways in a while. One way is health and safety. These days, countries use health and safety, right? It's my opinion that, I, it seems to me that the Korean protect their meat industry, beef, through health and safety. They don't accept beef from other countries because maybe 20 years ago, that country had a small disease in their cow. So Korea says, we don't accept your beef anymore. We don't, it's too unsafe. Right? So it seems like protectionism. So health and safety regulation, also the European Union can make a new size for the car door. Do you understand car door? So the door has to be very wide to be safe, right? So they will look at the Korean cars. Korean cars are doing very well in Europe. So. How wide are the Korean car doors? This wide. How wide are the European do car doors? This wide, right? So let's change the law, right? The doors need to be the European car, all the BMW size wide, right? Then the Korean company has to go back and change their factory, change all their tools, right? Spend a lot of money. So health and safety can also be used as protectionism. Okay? But tariffs is the most obvious one. We don't see much these days. In the past, we saw tariffs. Currency depreciation, these days, uh, some people talk about the currency war. We have seen the dollar first depreciated, the yen depreciated, the euro is depreciated, the UK pound is depreciated. It's a little bit like a game where the countries which don't depreciate is getting caught out. Okay, But we're going to ask the question, does it really work, currency depreciation? So, first of all, U.S. experience, in their experience, currency depreciation does not improve the trade deficit. Okay, so, the most famous example is during the 80s, the U.S. had a similar issue with Japan as it has now with China. Japan was producing a lot of low-cost electronic goods and selling them in the U.S. Okay? Yeah. So the U.S. was saying, oh, Japan's currency is too weak and mm, we are losing all our jobs because of Japan, okay? all our manufacturing jobs. So the U.S. decided to depreciate their currency. So they depreciated their currency by 50% against the yen. Right? So it didn't work. Why do you think it didn't work? Why didn't it work? The U.S. people still kept buying Japanese products, even though they were 50% more expensive. So why do why do you think it didn't work? At that time, basically, the U.S. and Japan were selling different products, right? Japan was selling 
electronics, right? The US was, let's say, selling just food on industrial goods, services, right? So even though the US depreciated their currency, okay? Do you understand depreciate? Yes. What's another word for depreciate? Make weaker, decrease the value, right? The Japanese electronics got more expensive. But did the US have an, a strong electronics industry no. at that time? No. No, so did it really help the US? No, right? People still bought Japanese electronics because the US didn't have a strong electronic industry. Okay, so that's one reason. In the US experience, it didn't work that well, right? The same. If they have the same products and they're selling the same products, it might work. Okay? So let's say that China and Russia or Brazil, they might be selling timber. Right? You understand timber? Yes. The similar product. So if one of those countries depreciates, it might help. They will sell more timber, right? But if we are talking about the countries which sell different goods of different type of economy, then the US experience was that it didn't work. They thought it would work, but it didn't improve their trade deficit. One of the reasons is it takes time to attack, uh, affect trade. So even though Japanese electronics are more expensive, or even in this case with timber, it still takes time. Just my supplier is from Russia. I have a contact from Russia, okay? China makes their currency cheaper. Am I going to change the next day to China because the timber is cheaper? No, I still I have a relationship with this company. Okay, I've, they've been selling me timber for years. The currency market can change, so it got a bit cheaper in China. But now I have to fly to China, meet them, and and make an agreement. Do I trust them? Right? Can I trust them? I don't know. I can trust these guys. I've been doing business with them for years. Right? So business to business we can see it takes a little bit of time. Maybe after one year or two years, the timber in China is still a lot cheaper. Finally, I might decide, okay, I'll start buying the Chinese goods instead, okay? Similar with the consumption of the goods, right? Let's say I, li I have a taste for Indian tea. I very like Indian tea, okay? Now, uh, <coughs> Malaysia depreciates their currency a lot. The Malaysian tea is much cheaper. Am I going to start buying Malaysian tea? No. Why not? Because yeah, I'm used to the taste of Indian tea, and I like Indian tea. I know how it works, right? So I'm going to use, continue to use the Indian tea. Okay? Maybe I, I, I buy BMWs. Okay? BMW is a luxury product. Is if the, I'm already paying a lot of money for a BMW. If the price changes a small bit, am I going to change my mind and buy Kia instead? No. Mm -hmm. no, right? So luxury products doesn't affect that much, okay? And other products, it takes time to affect the trade. The second point is the uh, J curve effect. So a decline in the currency value will initially worsen the deficit before improvement. So the trade balance initially deteriorates, and then just over time the trade balance can improve. So we can say that imports get more expensive, right? People don't, at the start it takes time, so people don't change their spending habits. But imports get more expensive for my company, so I have to spend more money to buy the imports. And uh, I don't get as much money for my exports, so initially, the trade balance can even get worse. Okay? So when Greece was talking about leaving the euro, depreciating their currency, is the oil going to be more expensive in Greece or less expensive? Oil. More expensive. Oil is going to be much more expensive, right? Oil is involved in the price of almost everything, right? Because you need transport or you need electricity in the factory. So. Oil is more expensive, other imports or inputs into your product become more expensive. And then the price, you might have to reduce the price of your product. Okay, so 
you are sorry you might not get as much of your own currency back when you sell your your product abroad so the trade balance can go down at the start can you understand this idea then over time it comes back up yes okay then a second idea of uh, Donald Trump and some people but not many is protectionism main ones is tariffs and quotas do you understand quota? What does quota mean? Hmm? Yes, there was one year where China had a quota of how much clothes they could import into the EU. So by November they already reached their quota. So they had to renegotiate with the EU for the Christmas period. It was a very busy one, right? To increase the quota. So we can use this way but the problem is it's going to reduce both imports and exports because as you said the other country is going to retaliate okay we can see nowadays with Russia and the EU right they're having some trade protectionism problem okay the EU says they're going to put economic sanctions on Russia then Russia says they're not going to buy European milk or dairy products or vegetables okay so it's going to reduce our imports from Russia, but also our exports to Russia. Everything is reduced, and the trade is reduced. Is that good or bad news? Bad news. Right? We have to remember that uh, Ricardo's idea on trade, Britain is very good at making cheese, Portugal is very good at making wine, so they should be able to trade the cheese and wine. Everybody gets an advantage. Okay. Otherwise, in England, they're drinking bad wine, and in Portugal, they're drinking, eating bad cheese for a high price, right? So, we don't want this kind of situation. <clears throat> so, we could also make limits or eliminate foreign ownership, okay? So, we want to stop pe uh, people from buying up large amounts in our stocks or so on. We could stimulate the national savings. We could change the tax regulations and rates. So we could encourage people to save, right? Uh, some governments make a program. The Irish government had a program to encourage people to save. You save the money for five years, they give you 25% extra at the end of the five years. A lot of people signed up to that program, okay? Uh, make it easier for people not to pay tax on their savings. So, we're going to study the case of the US current account later. We'll look at more detail about what the US can do to cope with their current account debts. Okay. So, <coughs> to sum up, we can't say that current account deficits are bad or good. One country's exports are another country's imports. It's not possible for every country to run a surplus. If every country in the world can't have a trade surplus. Somebody has to have the deficit. Okay? Currently, we can see the US has the big deficit and the other countries have smaller have surplus. So just Deficits might be a solution to the problem of different national tendencies to save and invest. Okay, so some countries prefer saving, some countries prefer investing or spending, right? So I prefer to get a loan and buy things. You prefer to give me a loan and, and get the interest from me. Okay, do you trust me to pay the interest? Yes, that's why you invested in the US, right? You trust that they're going to be able to repay. The stocks will repay because the company will be successful or the US government will repay because the government can repay their debt. Okay. So here we can see the global imbalances on this uh, slide. So on this side we have uh, surpluses on the positive side. On the negative side we have deficits. This is billions of US dollars. Okay. So this is the year, 2001. 2002. So is the situation getting more exaggerated or less exaggerated over the time? 
Getting more exaggerated or less exaggerated? More exaggerated, right? But then they, this was the crisis. So after the crisis went back in a little bit. Okay. So we can see what we have here. More than half of the world's deficit is being paid for by which country? The US. Right? So the US are buying a lot of stuff. That's what this is telling us. Okay? Other countries are exporting. Who's buying? Who's yes. buying the stuff people are exporting? The United States. Okay, the United States, they have a massive per capita deficit, okay? If you want to sell something, the US is a good market to sell. That's right? It has a big market, 250, 300 million people. They all speak the same language. It has modern infrastructure. It's easy to get marketing information. They have high income, okay? They spend a lot of money. So, people who want to sell their products, what market are they going to choose? Yes. If you do the statistics, any product in the world, right? US is a good market, okay? Start in one stage, you can expand easily, okay? So, companies also like to sell in the US. So, US is buying uh, Spain, the United Kingdom, uh, Australia, Okay, other countries have these as the deficit countries. What about the surplus countries? China. China. Japan. Japan. Oil exporters. These are the main holders of US government bonds, right? They are also they have the sovereign wealth bonds. Okay, Russia, other surplus countries here. So this is just giving you an idea. So we were making the simple story, right, of China, the oil economies, and Japan, and the US. Looks about the same amount, right, here. So here we can have uh, current accounts, saving, and investment as a fraction of GDP. So we're going to look at the current account, which is the yellow line, savings, which is the blue line, and investment, which is the red line. So what do we expect to see in the US? Which line should be higher? Investment or saving? Investment. Investment, right? So investment is higher than saving. Where's the money coming from? Another In other countries, right? US savings can't afford to pay for all of the investment in the US. Okay? We need savings from outside. And we can see that this is about the same as the current account deficit. The difference between the savings and investment. This was the equation we looked at. Savings minus investment equals exports minus imports. Right? We can see it's about the same. When savings and investments are almost the same, there's no current account deficit. Right back in 1990 or here. Okay? But when there's a wide gap between savings and investment, there's also a big current account deficit. So what about in Japan? What do we expect to see? Higher savings or higher investment? Savings. Okay, so savings is higher. Investments is lower. Okay, so similar, they have the current account surplus. Okay. Euro area, not a big difference. Okay. Savings slightly higher than investment. And the other countries also quite uh, similar, right? So, do you have any question about this graph? No. <coughs> okay, so then let's check a uh, review question with our partner. So, just... Why don't these solutions work for Coping with the currency account deficit. Why doesn't currency depreciation work and why doesn't protectionism work?